The Nintendo Switch is one of the best gaming consoles in the history of the medium. It's fun, cool, family friendly, and of course, it lets us play our favorite games anywhere. Other than some graphical limitations, there's really no downside to the entire system. Well, except for the one dark secret that Nintendo doesn't want you to know about. That's right, today the gamer is digging into games costing more on the Switch and the dreaded Switch tax. We'll also highlight the affordability of other gaming platforms forms in the history of discs and cartridges in game, and future pricing models in the industry. The gaming industry is still in its Wild West phase and will find new ways to scam you soon. That's why this video is an absolute must watch. The Cost of Gaming One of the biggest selling points of the Nintendo Switch is that it's one of the most affordable gaming systems on the market. With a $300 launch price that's remained pretty constant, there's a good amount of truth to that. When you consider that the undockable Switch Lite only costs 200 bucks, the Switch quickly becomes a go-to gift for younger gamers or a companion device to another console. Then again, if you are a solo Switch gamer, power to ya! There are more than enough games across every genre on the Switch to keep you busy. Compared to the other current-gen gaming systems, the Switch is arguably the best value proposition. At its launch in 2013, the PlayStation 4 would set a buyer back about 400 bucks, which is fair, but didn't wash the PS3's $600 launch price out of most gamers' mouths. The enhanced PlayStation 4 Pro premiered three years after the OG PS4 and also cost $400. The Xbox One? Well, that was even more expensive and cost a whopping $500 when it premiered in 2013. However, Microsoft decided to cater to as many demographics as possible and released several revisions of the Xbox. Consoles in the Xbox One S series cost between $300 and $400 depending on the model's storage capacity. The souped-up Xbox One X premiered in 2017 and also cost $500. Two years later, the extremely affordable Xbox One S All Digital Edition premiered at $250 but could not play physical versions of the games. While the debate over which version of the Xbox One is best will rage on for years, we can all at least agree that they have really bad names, right? Complicating things even further is the recently launched Google Stadia. On the surface, Google Stadia is pretty affordable, and for $10 a month, it lets gamers play some games on Google devices and Google Chrome. However, you do have to buy the games on top of the subscription fee, and in some cases, games cost more to stream on Stadia than they would on any other platform. So, anyone playing on the Stadia is in really saving money in the long term, especially if you have data caps on your home internet. Last but not least, we have to bring up Microsoft's Game Pass. For about 15 bucks a month, Game Pass lets Xbox and PC gamers play literally any game in its catalog. It's essentially a Netflix for games and offers casual gamers a really affordable way to play a huge variety of titles. Basically, if you're someone with an Xbox or PC and gaming is your main hobby, a Game Pass subscription is a must-have. Okay, that covers just about every major way to play games today. Man, have we come a long way since the original Sega Genesis Super Nintendo console wars. One thing that we should definitely mention, though, is that unless there's a sale or something, games usually cost the same on Xbox, PC, and PS4. This is usually true for the Switch 2, but not always. And the reasons why some games cost more on the Switch are actually pretty bizarre. Switch cartridge costs and the Switch tax. To keep the system from being too clunky, Switch games come on cartridges rather than Blu-ray discs. These cartridges are basically just uniquely shaped SD cards and can fit about 32 gigabytes of data on them. While that's significantly less than the 50 gigs that can fit on a Blu-ray disc, it's just enough room for major games to be ported over to the system. However, Switch cartridges are more expensive to manufacture than Blu-ray discs. And no, it's not because Nintendo sprays them with a bittering agent to keep kids from eating them. Don't lick your Switch cartridges, kids. The likes aren't worth it. Blu-ray discs are mostly made out of polycarbonate, and that's been etched with a game's data. It's pretty quick and cost-effective to make Blu-rays, and they're the standard medium for home movies and physical versions of games these days. Ironically, Sony owns the rights to Blu-ray technology, so Microsoft actually has to pay its competitor every time they make a hard copy of a game. Isn't that crazy? Switch cartridges, on the other hand, require more time and materials to produce. That's why a lot of multi-platform titles cost more on the Switch than they did on the other systems. It was more expensive to put the game on a cartridge than a disc. You know the old saying, Nintendo don't make it easy for companies to develop for their systems. Okay, maybe that's not exactly how the old Sega commercials went, but you get the idea. Puyo Puyo Tetris is the go-to example for this phenomenon. At launch, the PS4, Xbox, and Steam versions of the game cost $30. However, the physical and digital versions of the game on Switch cost 
hours more, 40. This is a shame as the quirky puzzle game meshes well with the Switch's portability. Thankfully though, this specific kind of price increase is becoming less common today. While a single Switch cartridge costs more to make than one Blu-ray disc, they're about the same at a mass production scale. Now that the Switch has sold more than 35 million units, all games for the system need to be mass produced to a level that evens the price to the rest of the industry. Of course, that doesn't stop gaming companies from just charging more for the Switch version of the game anyway. In the last few years, we've seen plenty of Switch ports of iconic games. Skyrim, The Witcher 3, and 2016's Doom all came to the portable system. However, each of these games cost $60 on the Switch, despite their original versions releasing years prior and selling for much cheaper. Since the Switch is pretty dissimilar from the other major gaming platforms, more work has to go into porting games to the Switch in the first place. This means that a lot of game development companies feel like they can get away with pricing a port like this as a brand new game. If you ask me, that's pretty morally ambiguous and not the best for consumers, you know, us. One thing is for sure though, some way, somehow, some when, Bethesda is gonna find another new way to sell you Skyrim. And we'll buy it. The history of cartridges and gaming. By now, you're probably wondering why Nintendo would have the Switch read cartridges instead of discs if they're more expensive to make. Well, the answer to that question is because the Switch would look like a literal brick if it had an optical drive inside. There's actually a fascinating history behind cartridges and discs and gaming and how Nintendo shifted them ended a lot of the long-standing feuds. Way back in 1989, Nintendo and Sony started working on a console together. Can you believe it? This system would take advantage of the rapidly developing CD-ROM technology, blast from the past, which which would store more data than cartridges. This would allow developers to create bigger and more complex games and finally make the jump to 3D. The two companies even announced this joint venture at the 1991 Consumer Electronics Show entitled their console the Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, unless you know absolutely nothing about gaming, in which case, why are you watching this video, mom? You know that this console didn't come to fruition. Fearing that Sony was trying to use the partnership to springboard into the gaming industry on their own, Nintendo backed out of the partnership. Instead, they partnered with the Dutch company Philips to create the Philips CDI, which was an utter failure and responsible for all those nightmare-fueled Zelda games. You know, the ones that look like they were made in a haunted version of MS Paint? Ugh. The dumpster fire that was the CDI convinced Nintendo to stick with cartridges for the Nintendo 64. This started the company's trend of using less graphically intense hardware in their systems. Sony, fueled by spite and now convinced that the future of gaming was disc-based, developed the PlayStation anyway. That's right, a disagreement over cartridges and discs led to the creation of one of the biggest names in gaming. This conflict would have wide-reaching consequences and burn several bridges in the gaming industry. For instance, the dev company Square, now Square Enix, used to release all their major games on Nintendo systems. Final Fantasy 1 through 6, Super Mario RPG, and Chrono Trigger all played major roles in elevating Nintendo's consoles to the top of the market. However, Nintendo's decision to stick with cartridges for the N64 made Square decide to publish the iconic Final Fantasy 7 on the PS1. This created a major rift between Nintendo and Square that lasted literal decades. Only with the release of Dragon Quest XI, S Echoes of the Elusive Age, did Square Enix publish one of their tentpole series on a Nintendo console again. It took that long. So yeah, the gaming industry is pretty much exactly as petty as you think it is. Even if Switch cartridges are more expensive to make and don't have that much storage space, they're really helping Nintendo out. The Switch's compact size is key to its gargantuan popularity, which has made the console the platform of choice for many indie developers. Between these new connections and Nintendo's rekindled relationship with Square Enix, the company is poised to do quite well in the next few years, buy that stock. Even if the increased cost of the Switch games isn't great for consumers in the short term, there are other concern trends in gaming gamers should worry about a little bit more. Future cost concerns in gaming. While the price bump in cartridge games and the Switch tax is a major bummer, it should solve itself out before too long. As the average number of Switch game sales increases, cartridges will be mass produced and games will be directly made for the Switch. This won't stop Nintendo and other game companies from ripping people off in other ways though. Console owners, and Nintendo in particular, have heavily increased incentivizing gamers to buy digital copies of the games. While digital copies of games do use zero physical resources and are usually more convenient to purchase, there's a shady element to that too. Funds from developer game sales go directly to a game publisher and the platform holder, since there isn't a retailer to take the cut. Digital sales might seem like a better way to support the people who make your favorite games, but they also directly lead to the closing of gaming spaces. You know how GameStop isn't doing so hot lately? Yeah, digital game sales has a lot to do with that. Furthermore, consumers never really own digital games like they do with analog ones. 
A platform holder can pull a game from their library for various reasons and prevent players from re-downloading a copy. The most famous example of this is how Ubisoft made the Scott Pilgrim vs. The World game unavailable after their license to publish the game had expired. So basically, when you buy a game digitally, you're paying 60 bucks to rent a game until a platform or publisher decides that you can't play that game anymore. Nintendo in particular uses some arguably unethical practices to push players towards buying digital games. For decades, Nintendo has used artificial scarcity to drive up interest in its products. The reason you had a hard time finding a Nintendo Switch or Wii at launch wasn't because Nintendo underestimated how popular the systems would be. The company intentionally made their products harder to find, to increase demand and keep the public interested in them for a longer period of time. Nintendo does the same thing with its flagship video game franchises as well. After all, most people aren't going to wait until their local Walmart restocks to play Breath of the Wild or Pokemon Sword and Shield at launch. They'll buy it digitally, which makes Nintendo more money and further incentivizes them to make fewer physical copies of their next big game. Hello, I like money. It's a vicious cycle and the only way to break it is to get gamers to chill out about new releases and playing them right away. Since that's not going to happen anytime soon though, there's not a lot to be done. Nintendo may be responsible for filling millions of childhoods with wonder, but it's still a massive corporation, don't forget. That means Nintendo is going to find new and eyebrow-raising ways to separate people from their hard-earned money. Whether that be the switch tax, cartridge upcharges, digital purchases, or forced scarcity, it doesn't matter. All anyone can do is try to be a smart consumer and try to stay ahead of these kinda scummy tactics. What do you think about our breakdown of Nintendo's shady business practices? Please let us know in the comment section below. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to The Gamer, like this video, and ring that bell. We've got plenty more videos about gaming industry secrets coming soon, and you're not going to want to miss a single one of them.